Pneumatology lesson number 10. This is a study of the Holy Spirit. And uh, we're going to try to finish it up, I think. We're going to draw our best. Roman numeral 5. What page is that on in your notes? Nine. Page number 9. That way those that are listening at home uh, can uh, follow along in the notes. Roman numeral 5. The gifts of the Holy Spirit. Now your capital A, the definition. This is what the definition of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. A God-given ability for service. A God-given ability for service. And that does not mean always. It does not always mean talent. Uh, you can have a talent uh, that is totally different than uh, the gifts of, of, the, of the Spirit. A God-given ability for service. Um, all right, that's the definition. Capital B. To whom and from whom are the gifts given? And I guess probably this is another one of the subjects. Excuse me. That is, uh, a lot of times um, confused or confusing about some things. Look at. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Let's just look. We just have to jump in with both feet and look. The gifts, they come from the Holy Spirit. We'll look at these for just a few minutes. This will probably take the rest of our time. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And verse number 1. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren. Every time the Apostle Paul says brethren, he's talking to saved people. If you're saved, I'm saved. We're brothers and sisters in Christ. That's why we call people in church. We'll call brother so-and-so. Brother Charles and brother, you know, this, that, the other. That's what the Apostle Paul is referring to. Now concerning spiritual gifts, Brethren, I would not have you to be ignorant. Uh, you know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as you were led. Uh, and so on and so forth. He goes in uh, now. Verse 4. Now there are diversities of gifts. Okay? Different kinds of gifts. Diversities. Different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit. There's only one Holy Spirit, but there's different kinds of gifts. Uh, verse 5, and there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. Uh, look at verse 6, and there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. Look at verse 4. The end of verse 4, but the same Spirit. Look at the end of verse 5, but the same Lord. Look at the end of verse 6, or no, the middle of verse 6, but it is the same God. you got the Spirit... Lord and God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit in verse 4, 5, and 6. Verse 7, But the manifestations of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Uh, look at verse 8. 4 to 1 is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discern, uh, discerning of spirits. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. Different kinds of tongues. Different kinds of languages. Okay? I don't know if we've got time to go into that or not. In the Bible, remember this. Every time, tongues is reference to a language. It is a language. Spanish, French, Amen. whatever. In Acts chapter number 2, when the Holy Spirit came down, there were tw uh, 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 12 apostles. <coughs> if you'll do your research on the day of Pentecost, see on the day of Pentecost, folks, there were uh, all Jews came to Jerusalem for the day of Pentecost. That's a big event. That's like Christmas Easter for us. I mean, they all come to Jerusalem for the day of Pentecost. Jews from France. Jews from England. Jews from wherever. Jews from Germany. Jews from 
wherever, Syria, all of them come to Jerusalem. So when all of these Jews got to Jerusalem, they all come from all different kinds of countries that spoke different languages. Are you with me? So, how is God going to get His message to all of these Jews <coughs> that all of them are in Jerusalem speaking all, some of them speaking German, some of them speaking French, some of them English, some of them Syrian, some of them Spanish, some of them this. How in the world the Holy Spirit comes upon those 12 apostles. Those 12 apostles, if you'll do your research in Acts chapter 2, I don't have time to do it tonight. Maybe we will one at a later date. There were 12 different nationalities represented in Acts chapter number 2. 12 different apostles. The Holy Spirit comes upon those 12 different apostles and those 12 different apostles were speaking what those people, in other words, Peter, just for instance, Peter was speaking Spanish. And all the Jewish uh, uh, people that were there that were from the Spanish-speaking countries heard what Peter said. I'm going to have to go there. Yeah. Look at Acts chapter number 2 real quick. Hold your plate. Cut a finger off. And uh, stay in 1 Corinthians. We're coming back. I really don't have time, I don't think, to do this. Might as well take time and... All right, Acts two, verse four. <coughs> we'll we'll do it real quick. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. We're talking about the apostles now. They were all gathered up right there. Verse four. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues. Mark that down. As the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every what? Nation. Under what? I just told you that. Verse 6. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded, <coughs> because that every man heard them speak in his own what? Language. Well, verse 4 says the Holy Spirit gave them a... Uh, uh, they be, the Holy Spirit came upon them. They just began to speak with other what? Language. What were the other tongues? Language. Verse 6 tells you every man heard his own language. So what is tongues? Language. It's a language. Now you say, well what about unknown tongues? Folks, if somebody came in here right now and started speaking German, it would be an unknown tongue to me. Every time the Bible says unknown tongue, it's unknown to one party or the other. One of the parties it is known by. Amen. You understand? Amen. All right. Verse 7. They were all amazed and marveled, saying one to the other, Behold, are not all of these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own language wherein we were born? There is the first one, nationalities. Uh, uh, Parthians, Medes, so-and-sos, Mesopotamians, Cappadocians, Judea, Pontus, Asia, Perga, Pamphylia, Egypt. See all of that? Strangers of Rome, Jews, proselytes, Creeks, Arabians. We do hear them speak in our own, in, in our tongues, the wonderful words of God. Those people in Acts chapter 2 heard a language, a nationality language. It wasn't what people say today. Amen. What's the, why those churches speak in tongues? Well, we'll get to that in just a second. It's, it's, um, it's a different thing. It's, 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 it's what, you know, and look, you don't, I don't know where all the backgrounds you come from, hallelujah, whatever. I'm just, I'm just reading the Bible, and this is just the Bible. Um, everybody that's toting the Bible under the arm, everybody has a suit and tie on, everybody goes to church on Sunday. Um, 
may not be telling the truth. You got to look in the Bible and see. Amen. How many of y'all have ever heard? Oh yeah, them, on the day of Pentecost, man, everybody started uttering tongues, and boy, here they go. How many of y'all heard that? Yeah. Well, now after you read Acts chapter number two, you find out what actually really did happen. That's my point. Not making fun of those folks. Bless their heart. I wish they'd read. I wish they'd learn to read a little. We just did it. We just read it. Um, okay. I'm getting hot. I get burnt out. I get bent out of shape now. People can't read. Go back to First Corinthians 12. Let's get back on track where we're going. Find out where we was headed. I don't even remember now. All right, verse 10. Talking about spiritual gifts. First Corinthians 12, verse 10. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning spirit. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one self-same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. Every person that's saved in this room, I hope all of you are, and I think you are, every person that's saved in this room, or every person that's saved anywhere, you have at least one spiritual gift. It was given to you by the Holy Spirit. You do not get saved and then start praying for it. Lord, I want to give this, I want this gift, I want this gift. It ain't up to you. The Lord will give you the gift He wants you to have. You don't get saved and go, Oh Lord, I want this gift. He may not want you to have that gift. Amen. He gives you another gift. Why? Because He knows you better than you do. Um, Alright, I think I got off my notes here. Okay, here we go. The Holy Spirit is my point. The Holy Spirit is the one that gives the gift, not the individual. When you get saved, you don't make a decision what gifts you want, what gifts you don't want, and start praying for them. Now, you, want, you might want to write this down if it's not in your notes already. The, the spiritual gifts are found in three different places in the Bible. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, what we just read. Well, there's more to it, but anyway. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Um, and in and, and chapter 13 and 14, we'll talk about spiritual gifts as well. So, 1 Corinthians 12, 13, 14. Ephesians 4. And Romans 12. Three places. Gifts are found. 1 Corinthians 12, 13, 14. That's chapter 12, chapter 13, chapter 14. Ephesians chapter 4, that one chapter. And Romans chapter 12. If you want to study spiritual gifts, uh, there you'll find those. Now, verse 7 tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Every person has a spiritual gift. Every saved person, that is, has a spiritual gift. Now, every person in this room does, there's not a person in this room, including myself, that has all the gifts. Uh, Amen. Then nobody has it. Oh, what I mean. Let me give you, for instance, we're in there in chapter 12. Look at this. Verse 28. And God hath sent some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after uh, that miracles, then gifts of healing, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. Verse 29, watch this. Are all apostles? What's the answer to that question? No. Are all prophets? No. Are all teachers? No. Are all workers of miracles? No. Have all the gifts of healing? No. <clears throat> Do all speak with tongues? Yes! <coughs> Language. Why is it that it's no, 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 no and then you get to tongue? Yes! Yeah. Everybody's got that gift. Yeah. <laughs> you can't, you've got to be consistent. If it's no with the apostles, if it's no with prophets, if it's no, then it's no with that. So that means, are you with me? We're reading the Bible. We're reading the Bible. So if you have ever been told, 
Now this this may this may rub you a lot. This may rub you the wrong way, but if it does, if you'll turn around. It's like rubbing the cat the wrong way. If you'll turn the cat around, you'll rub him the right way. So if it rubs you the wrong way, you need to turn around. So if you've been told that you have to speak in tongues to go to heaven, according to the Bible, you can say your life. Amen. All right. Let's read it again. Are all apostles? Y'all answer. No. Are all prophets? No. Are all teachers? No. Are all workers of miracles? No. Have all the gifts of healing? No. Do all speak with tongues? No. Do all interpret? No. But cover, cover earnestly the best gifts, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. Amen. Now, uh, there we go. Now, uh, number three, not everyone has all the gifts. I think we just went over that. Um, a person, okay. In the Bible, <coughs> the Bible days, I'm not really talking about right now, but I'm talking about here in the Bible. A person that has, or a person that had the gift of healing in the Bible did not have to depend upon the face of the faith of the person being healed. Amen. God will not give you a gift and then say before you can use it, the person has to have enough faith before you can heal them. Alright, let me explain. Yeah. If a person claims to have the gift of healing, Amen. And they come and try to heal you, and they don't heal you, and then they say it's your fault because you didn't have enough faith. That ain't in the Bible. Amen. Amen. That's a cop out. Yeah. If I if I try to heal you and you're not healed, I say, oh, you just didn't have enough faith. It ain't my fault. Amen. That ain't how the gift of healing. Question. Question. How much faith did Lazarus have before Jesus rose him from the dead? <laughs> How much faith did Jairus' daughter have before Jesus rose her from the dead? How much faith did he have or she have? <coughs> See, the healing is not dependent upon that person's faith. If you have the gift of healing, now this may rub you the wrong way too. If you have the gift of healing, then, now listen, think about it logically. If you have the gift of healing, you ought to be able to get in your car, drive up to Dyersburg Regional Hospital, Amen. and clean the place out. Amen. And then after you leave Dyersburg General Hospital, uh, Regional Hospital, you need to go down to Dyersburg Manor, and then over to um, Saint Jude. Where? Saint Jude. Saint Jude, and clean that place out. And if you can't do it, get some word set down. We ain't got time to listen to you. Amen. How was that for Ben Cooth? That's true. All them people that say that, though. Now, folks, you listen. Now they've got mad. Now they got off uh, burnt, uh, behind the collar, so I don't, I don't care who I offend now. When I get to this point, it don't matter. <laughs> if a man Preach says you've got to come to my tent, for me to heal you. Mm -hmm. He's a liar and a truth ain't in it. Amen. He ain't got the gift of healing no more than I got the yeah, gift of anybody. <laughs> if that man, listen, I, can I, now I'm really hot. <laughs> my hand up, my right hand up is Wendy Michael says. Yeah. This happened. I lived in Jackson, Tennessee. I worked at the courthouse. Uh, there at uh, Jewel Court. There was a big ad in the paper. I'm telling y'all, both hands up, I'm telling you right now. They had a big tent set up, big healing meeting. Y'all yep. don't criticize me, that's fine. You say, brother Jerry's making fun. I ain't making fun. But I'm just telling you, all the crazy folks Ain't in the bottle. Amen. 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 That's 
true. This man, big ad in the Jackson Sun. I'm sitting there looking at him. Can see the tent from my office, third floor of the office I had. I'm sitting there watching. Man, they had a blowout. I mean, blow man, son, they going at it, going to town Monday and Tuesday night. With my hand up, the meeting was canceled on Wednesday night because the preacher caught the flu. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Somebody help me. Amen. If you can't even heal yourself, Amen. That's true. Okay. Where do we go from here? That's the truth of my hand up. Amen. Now whatever. <laughs> to each his own. But I'm going to stick with the Bible is what I'm going to stick with. Amen. Now you say, preacher, are you against it? No, I ain't what against it. Say? Son, I've been healed a bunch of times. <coughs> but I didn't have to go to nobody to get it. Yeah. I went to the Lord to get it. Amen. He gave it to me right where I was at, whether I was in the living room, whether I was sitting in the office here at the church. He gives healing when he gets ready. Amen. And I don't have to drive to Florida to get it or, or uh, Oklahoma. Amen. 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 Okay. All right. Now let's look at this. Um. Okay. Let me hit this one real quick before we go further. There are today. Here we are today. There's a hundred AD. We're, this is the rapture of the church, so I'm going to say uh, we're pretty close to right there. I hope we are. Amen. I hope we're actually closer than that. But yeah. here we go. Today, there is no such thing as an apostle or a prophet. Amen. Today. If you see somebody that says, I'm apostle so-and-so or I'm prophet so-and-so, just... Yeah. <laughs> All right, you say, preacher, how you know? Well, go to the Bible. I have to go to the Bible. Amen. I, I mean, I don't, I'm just, this is not Baptist, this is Bible. Amen. Everybody says, oh, that's just what the Baptists believe. I don't know what the Baptists believe. I don't, even, I don't even think half of them are going to heaven. Look at Acts chapter 1, and I'll tell you what, it qualif uh, what qualifies you to be an apostle. Amen. Yes. And you tell me if there's any such thing to that. You say, but there was in yes, apostles and prophets were right here. Yep. But there's something, something changed. As we are starting here in the book of Acts, Holy Spirit comes down, yada yada yada. Here we go. And by the time we get to here. There's a lot of stuff that has changed. Amen. Let me show you. Acts chapter 1, verse... Oh... Uh, um, look at verse 20. Alright, y'all remember um, Judas. Judas went out and betrayed the Lord. He went out and hung himself. Okay, yeah. the apostles are down to 11. They've got to replace Judas because twelve is the Jewish is the Jewish number, uh, and so we've got to replace Judas so we can have a complete twelve. Okay, verse twenty. For it is written in the book of Psalms, "Let his habitation be desolate." That's referring to Judas, and let no man dwell therein. In his bishopric, in other words, his office. Yeah. Let another take. All right. Wherefore of these men? which have accompanied with us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us. Beginning from the what? The baptism. baptism of John unto the same day that He was taken up from us must, one, be ordained to be a what? Witness. With us of His what? Resurrection. To be an apostle. You had to witness the resurrection. Mm -hmm. You had to be baptized by John. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
And you had to witness the resurrection. So, let me ask you a question. Are there any apostles today? No. No. Why? <laughs> if they are, there's some. Uh, he would at least have to be 2,000, <laughs> 2,000 years old. Does everybody see that? Yeah. Now I'm making fun. It's right there. Amen. People get on there and say, I'm apostle so and so. I say, you know. What about just, Paul? Say again? What about Paul? What about him? Was he was he an apostle? Yeah. Yes. He was a 13th they had, apostle. They had to accept him. They tried him. Uh the apostle Paul witnessed the resurrection. Did he? Because uh, you know, and 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 I can't prove this. But the Apostle Paul was a devout Jew of the sect of the Pharisees. He was probably baptized by John. He said he was an apostle. Yes. He's, uh, verse Corinthians chapter 9 says, I'm an apostle. Um, and uh, so anyway. Uh, and he's seen Jesus in his resurrected body. Yes. He did. Uh, which seen, uh, uh, that's 1 Corinthians 15, wasn't it? Where he says he was seen in me. Uh, <coughs> Of course, it's referring to the Apostle Paul. So, uh, there you go. The Apostle Paul was the last. After the Apostle Paul died, there are no more. Say again, Rob. We got 14? 13. Because they got two more. Well, well um, Judas was the 12th. He's out. Matthias became the 12th. The Apostle Paul became the 13th. <coughs> Here's what you had, and if we're getting into something now that, that I need, we, uh, we'll get into it later. You've got 12 apostles, 12 is the Jewish number, 12 apostles to the Jews. Yes. Then you've got that one apostle, the apostle Paul, the, Gentiles. the apostle to the Gentiles. You've got 12 to the Jews. You've got that one, 13, to the, uh, to the uh, Gentiles. Gentiles. Paul wrote 13 books in the New Testament. Amen. Romans through Philemon, there's 13 books there. Apostle Paul was the 13th apostle. He was called out in Acts chapter number 13. Uh, that Bible's amazing. Amen. All right, let me get to where I want to go. All right, look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. I am not going to make it. Time is getting away. First Corinthians chapter one. All right, first Corinthians chapter one, verse twenty-two. For the Jews require a what? And the Greeks seek after wisdom. Who requires a sign? The Jews require a sign. Why? The Jews were focused on sight. Y'all remember Thomas in the upper room? Thomas says, unless I see, I will not believe. Y'all remember that? Without having to turn to John 13. Thomas says, I need to see. Why? Thomas was a Jew. Jews require a sign. Gentiles, that's us. First Corinthians, uh, um, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7 for we walk by faith. faith and not by sight. Jews walk by sight and not by faith. Hebrews chapter twelve, verse one. Uh, uh, Hebrews chapter eleven. Hebrews chapter eleven, verse one says, "For faith is the substance of things hoped for, and the evidence of things not seen." I have faith in Christ. I've never seen it. I have faith there's a heaven. Never seen it. Amen. The Jews had to see with their eyes. Now, I'm going somewhere. Now, let's go to the first time signs were ever used. And let me show you what I'm talking about. Look at uh, uh, Exodus chapter 4. Exodus chapter 4. Real quick. Try to find it real good. Uh, and, and we'll I need more time than this but we'll make it happen 
Exodus chapter 4. <coughs> Signs. Alright? Um, Y'all remember the story of Moses and the burning bush? Y'all with me? Moses and the burning bush. Okay. He's sitting there arguing with the Lord. Moses is like, I, I mean, I can't go. They're not going to listen to me. You know, here we go. Okay. Chapter 4. Verse 1. And Moses answered and said, But behold, they will not believe me, neither hearken unto my voice. For they will say, The Lord hath not appeared unto them. Lord, I mean, they're not going to believe me. I'm going to sit there and tell them that you appeared to me in a burning bush and they're supposed to believe it. Watch. Verse 2. And the Lord said unto him, What is in thy hand? He said, A rock. He said, Cast it on the ground. <coughs> he cast it on the ground and it became a what? Serpent. Serpent. And Moses fled from the Lord. Now, if you don't think God's got a sense of humor, He does. That's funny. When we get to heaven, I'm going to rent that movie. And the Lord said unto Moses, Put forth thine hand and take it by the tail. And he put forth his hand and caught it, and it became a rod in his hand. Question? What was that? It's a sign. Who was that sign going to be to? The Jew. Why? Because the Jews require what? God says, Moses, Jews have to see stuff. They're sort of like Missouri folks. You have to just show them. They show me stuff. You got to show them stuff. Jews, you have to see it. So, alright, you say, why does he have to throw a snake down? Okay, remember, wait, remember. Moses doesn't have a Bible. You know why I don't have to throw a stick down on Sunday morning and turn it into a snake and, and to get y'all to believe what I'm coming out of my mouth is true? You know why I don't have to do that anymore? Because I can tell you, turn your Bible to Exodus chapter number 4 and let's read this story. Moses couldn't tell Pharaoh. Pharaoh, see here, I'm telling you the truth. Look, he didn't have that. So what he did was, he threw his rod down and turned to his snake and said, hey, Pharaoh, look. And all the Jews that were sitting there going, yeah. All right, watch. Verse 5. That they may believe that the Lord God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, hath appeared unto them. And the Lord said, Furthermore, unto him, put now thy hand into thy bosom. And he put his hand in his bosom. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. All right? So he took it, put it in his, pulled it out. He's got leprosy all over his hand. He puts it back in there, comes back. It's like the, the skin of the baby. Uh, verse 7, and he said, put thou the hand bo uh, the bosom again. He put his hand in the bosom again, plucked it out of his bosom, and behold, it turned again to other flesh. And it should come to pass that they will not believe thee, neither hearken to thy voice. And the first sign that they will believe the voice of the latter sign. And it shall come to pass if they will not believe also these two signs, neither hearken to the voice, that thou shalt take of the water of the river and pour it upon the dry land. And the water which thou takest out of the river shall become blood upon the dry land. You see that? God's given Moses all these signs and wonders, miracles, turning the water into blood and all of this stuff. All these signs. Why? Because he's going to be trying to tell these Jews, number one, hey, y'all need to follow me out of here. Well, why are we going to follow you out of here? What makes you any difference to anybody else? He's going to give them the sign. They say, oh, okay. Uh, and, and it goes through the more signs. Um, uh, Moses gives an excuse down in verse 10. I, 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 can't, I can't talk right. I stutter all the time. The Lord's like, I got that covered. Aaron's going to go with you. He's going to talk for you. Uh, all right, so on and so forth. Everybody got that? Now, what we just read was back here. Exodus. Chapter 4, where signs started to the Jews. Signs all the way. When Jesus comes on the scene, He's birthed, virgin birth, that's a sign. 
For this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in the manger. It's a sign. To who? The Jews. He's virgin born. This man's the Messiah. Y'all need to wake up and smell the coffee. You understand? Jesus is born. Jesus, the first miracle. The first miracle Jesus does. John chapter 2. Tell me what it was. Water into wine. Water into wine. The first miracle Moses did was turn water into blood. Jesus heals blind Bartimaeus. Why? For a sign to the Jews going, I'm the Messiah. Y'all need to wake up. Jews require what? A sign. Okay. Turn to Mark uh, 16. Mark 16. Now let's look at Mark 16 and then you'll just really be pulling your hair out by the end of the night. Look at Mark 16. Mark 16, verse 17. Mark 16, verse 17. And these signs, who requires a sign? Jesus. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. I think Moses did that. And if thou drink any deadly thing, uh, Moses turned the water into blood, that's deadly. And if thou shalt drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Verse 19. So then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and set, uh, set on the right hand of God. Verse 20. Don't miss verse 20. And they went forth. Who's the they? The apostles. Who are what what nationality are they? They went forth, the Jews went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord working with them and confirming the word with what? The apostles didn't have a Bible. They didn't have a Bible. They couldn't say, Hey, let me show you. Right here. What the Bible says. So what did they have to do? God give them the signs to go to the Jews to prove that Jesus, the man they just crucified, is the Messiah. Yeah. Alright. Now, look at 1 Corinthians. Back to 1 Corinthians. Let's look right quick. 1 Corinthians. Alright, let's look. Look at chapter 13. 1 Corinthians 13. Verse number... Look at verse number 8. I'm breaking into context, but anyway, verse 8 says, Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall what? Whether there be tongues, they shall what? Whether there be knowledge, it shall what? For we know in part. We prophesy in part. Okay, stop. Prophecies, whether they be prophecies, verse 8. That's, we know in part. Pro, uh, they shall fail. Plus, tongues, they shall see. That's in part. There be knowledge, it shall vanish away. That's in part. Verse, verse 9. For we know in part. And we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall what? Okay. The signs to the Jews. Are you with me? 
Here in Acts, there are several signs. Chapter 5, I think, is where Peter, uh, people walk through Peter's shadow and they, they got healed. That's Acts 5. Um, and, and a lot of other things happened, um, signs to the Jews in Acts. All the way you go through uh, the book of Acts. All the way through. The Bible. John wrote on the Isle of Patmos the book of Revelation. You with me? He wrote that in about 96 A.D. So he wrote that about 96 A.D. The Bible was complete. Amen. John wrote Revelation. That's it. There's nothing else on the other end of Revelation except the maps. So the Bible is complete in 96 A.D. All right. For we know in part, we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect is come, what's perfect? Word of God. <clears throat> that which is done in part is what? I no longer have to have the signs of an apostle to confirm the word. Amen. Because I have a copy in my hand. Yeah. Amen. Does everybody understand that? Yeah. You understand that? Acts, yes. There's a lot of things going on. People getting miraculously healed. Now, is healing still going on today? Yes. 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 Most definitely it's going on. But see where Peter is doing the healing here. There's not a man here that does the healing. Right. God does the healing here. Yes. Amen. Man's doing the healing here. Why? Because the Jews require a what? Right. They have to see it. Well, on this side of the Bible being complete, we walk by and not by. So I don't need the signs because I'm not walking by sight. I'm walking by faith. Um, okay. Let me prove my point before we go home. Well, let me... Let me uh, oh, okay. Should I or should I not? Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, look at chapter 14. I'm going to do it. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. I can do this real quick. Now wait. 122, 1 Corinthians 122 said what? The Jews require... Okay. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 22. Real easy to remember. 122, 1 Corinthians, and 1 Corinthians 14, 22. Mm -hmm. Y'all with me? Are y'all ready for this one? Y'all do believe the Bible, don't you? Amen. Y'all would never question the Bible, would you? No. Okay. The Jews require what? Verse 22. Wherefore, tongues are for a... Not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. But prophesying serveth not for them that believe not, but for them that would believe. Verse 23, If therefore the whole church be come together into one place, and all speak with tongues, and there come in those that are unlearned, unbelievers, will they not say that you are mad? But if all prophesy, and there come in one that believeth not, and one unlearned, is he convinced of all? Is he judged of all? And thus are the secrets of his heart made manifest, so, and so falling down on his face, he will worship God and report that God is in you of a truth. Now, verse 26. How is it then, brethren, when you come together, every one of you hath a psalm, hath a doctrine, hath a tongue, hath a revelation, hath an interpretation. Let all things be done unto edifying. If it's not going to edify nobody, sit down and be quiet. That's what it means in the Greek. Verse 27. Are y'all ready for this? 
If any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two or at the most by three, and that by course. You know what that means? That means if anybody's going to speak in tongues, if you're going to do it, do it right, do it like Paul said to do it, and no more than three people do it, and you've got to wait, you've got to do it one at a time. One guy's got to go, then we wait to get this other guy to go, and then this other guy goes. You don't all three do it at the same time. Amen. No more than three do it, period. Two are at the most by three. Right. And if you're going to do it, one's got to go, and then the other one goes. It's by course. And then don't, worry, don't forget the rest of the verse. Yeah, and let one what? Interpreter. Okay. But if there be no interpreter, let him do what? Keep silent. Why? Because if you don't know what the dude's saying, there's no edification about it. So if somebody can't tell you what the, what the man that just spoke German said, then you're not edifying the church. You need to get somewhere and sit down and be quiet. And let him, okay, if we don't have an interpreter, let him keep silent in the church and let him speak to himself and to God. Let the prophet speak to or or three. Let the other judge. In other words, see you know see if he's telling the truth. Uh, look at verse thirty three. I mean, I got to hurry. God is not the author of what, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. Verse thirty four. Let your women keep silent in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak. But they are commanded to be under obedience as also saith the law. And if they will learn anything, let a master husbands at home, for it is a shame for a woman to speak in the church. All right, stop. I know what you're thinking. <laughs> oh, brother Jeremy. Brother Jeremy, people talking, people women talking in the church. <laughs> Wait. Does that verse mean? Now let's think together. I keep I don't know. Does that verse mean a lady cannot testify in church? Does that mean a lady can't sing a special in church? <coughs> Don't mean that. Does that mean a lady can get up and say, I, hey, I want to tell my testimony how I got saved? She can do that. But it says, let the woman keep silent in the church. Well, what does it mean then? What's the con what have we been talking about? Context. Tongues. What's the context? What have we been talking about? And y'all not going to like this one. You're not going to like it. You're not going to like it. But a woman's not supposed to speak in tongues in church. Amen. Amen. The rules. The rules for speaking in tongues. If you're going to do it, do it by two or three at the most and do it by course one at a time. And then after the three go, then we got an interpreter in the house. Is there an interpreter in the house? If not, all three of you sit down and hush. You're not edifying nobody. We don't even know what you're saying. And if a lady stands up, wants to testify, speak English, edify the church. If she speaks in tongue, lady, you're out of the order, sit down, let the woman be tied in the church. Amen. That's right. That, my friend, is a lie. Right. Amen. But a woman can teach, right? Sure. Yeah, she can teach. That verse right there does not say a woman can't teach, can't testify, can't sing in the choir, can't you know sing a special, can't play the piano, can't do... That verse doesn't say that. Stay with the context. Amen. The whole chapter has been talking about tongues, tongue, 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 and then you get to verse 33. Oh, that means you can't say nothing. It doesn't mean that. Context. Context. Now, oh, I got time to show you one more thing. One more thing. Acts 19. We'll get off the tongues for a minute. We'll get on something. Go study it. Go read it. Don't get mad at Brother Jeremy. Get mad at the Bible. Amen. If you find something different 
I can promise you, put my hand up, you come show me, and if I'm wrong, I'll change. All right, look at Acts 19 real quick, because we've got to go. We should have done been quick. <coughs> look at verse 11. For I read verse 11. Acts 11. Oh, no. Acts 19. 11. Verse number 1. 11. Right there. Does everybody see where I'm at? Right there, where my X is on the chart. And God wrought spiritual miracles by the hands of Paul, so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Son, Acts chapter number 19, verse number 11. Man, if Paul just touched, touched anything, touched a handkerchief or an apron, son, it healed, man, it healed the whole crowd. Yes, sir. Man, I'm talking about Paul had it, son. I'm talking about had it. I ain't, gonna, I ain't got time to tell you this one, but Acts 28, which is just a little piece past this one. Acts 28. Y'all remember the snake coming out of the thing and biting him on the hand? A viper? And he was supposed to die? He shook it off in the fire. Didn't die. Why? He had the signs of an apostle. Yes, sir. Man, he was a dude. I mean, you couldn't kill him. Okay. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. We're done for tonight. I think you've had all you can stand. <laughs> 2 Timothy chapter 4. Now, while you're finding 2 Timothy chapter 4, I'm going to go over here on my chart. And 2 Timothy, Romans, 1 Second Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1 Second Peter, or, or, or Colossians, uh, 1 Second Thessalonians, 1 Second Timothy. 2 Timothy, chapter 4, look at verse 20. Now you do understand that Paul wrote... <coughs> 2 Timothy. And he wrote chapter 4 and he wrote, and he wrote verse 20. Apostle Paul. The same Apostle Paul that in Acts 28 a, a snake couldn't hurt him. In Acts chapter number 19 people was getting healed left and right just by touching the apron that came from his body. 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 20. Erastus abode at Corinth. But Trimophius, have I left at my lead on what? Paul, I got a question for you. Why'd you leave that man in our city? What'd you leave him in our city for? Why didn't you heal him? Why didn't you do what you did in Acts 19, Paul? Why did you leave the man sick? <coughs> You can write this down if you want to. 1 Timothy 5.23 says, Use a little wine for thy stomach's sake and thy often infirmities. Apostle Paul says when you got an upset stomach, take a little wine. Now don't, don't go do that at home. they got medicine for that now. Back in 1 Timothy 5, they didn't have medicine for that. And the doctor will tell you that red wine, he told me that when I had my surgery, he said that will heal the stomach lining faster than anything, a glass of red wine every night before you go to bed. I said, I can't do that. And uh, he said, well, it'll work. To prove exactly what Paul said in 1 Timothy 5 and verse 23. Use a little wine for thine off the uh, stomach sink and off the infirmities. Question, why was Paul giving out medicine? That's what it was used for, medicine. 1 Timothy 5, 5 verse 23. Why was he giving out medicine in 1 Timothy 5 when he was healing folks left and right in Acts 19? Are you seeing something? Amen. By the time we're headed that direction, when that which is perfect is come, that which is in part is done away with. So the things that are going on in the book of Acts 
Don't expect to see all them things going on over here. They don't go on over here like they did over here because we got a complete Bible in our lap now. Amen. And the Jews require what? The Greeks seek after what? That's why Paul, Paul was talking to a bunch of Gentiles. Acts 19, he's talking to a bunch of Jews. Jews require what? Gentiles walk by faith and not by sight. Everybody get that? Amen. All right, I went over tonight. Have to be it for tonight.